Euzu billahi mineşşeytanir recim. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Ati Allah ati Rasulullah elhamdülillahikum. And that an abdukul ajisu da'ifu miskinu zalimu jahan but for the grace of Allah that we are still in existence. And alhamdulillah in the next few days is the opening of Muharram and the month of of purity, the month of hijrah, the month of the new year, the first lunar month of the year. And the reality for us on sayyat and sins, it's important to understand that when insan and people sin, what is the effect upon our reality? that we are teaching the realities of energy and every practice that is being taught is building an energy, building the power of the soul, building a protection that we said the inside controls what's happening outside. The more that we can build the inner reality and build the power, give the soul the energy and the power that it needs, the more successful the physicality and this life will be. Because the soul is nourished, the soul empowered. When Divinely Lights dress the soul, every rizq and sustenance comes for that body because it's already coming onto the soul. Those are the lights and the rizq that Allah wants, Allah doesn't care for the, the dunya. But when the practices are coming, the lights are coming, the salawats, the, the durood, the awrads, the prayers and fasting and every amal that insan does, it's a light upon the soul, a power upon the soul. As a result of the blessings that have reached the soul, then every overflowing to the physicality will begin to come onto that insan. And these practices that are being done, they begin to teach is that you're building a shield. So the good action and the good deeds in which Allah is pleased with builds a shield for the believer. So envision ourselves with a bubble of energy all around us. And that every time we sit and do our practices and we do our tafakkur and contemplation that, that shield is becoming stronger and stronger and stronger. As a result of that shield becoming stronger, difficulties come less because the shield of protection is strong and is shielding all of these shayateen away. As a result the practices become more blessed, the rizq becomes more blessed, all the lights that are coming upon the soul become more blessed and that's what Allah had envisioned for us. So imagine from the world of light, that's what Allah wants for us is that, I'm sending you onto this earth, your shield is your good deed. So we described before that when the first insan arrived onto this earth, and how the whole system of movement was designed by Allah that the first insan comes onto this earth, let's say is the first person that Allah ever created. When they come onto the earth everything arrives to them because they're freshly from paradise. As a result Allah feeds them, Allah clothes them, Allah carries them. So look at children, they come fresh from paradise, no sayyat, no sins. As a result they have an amazing power, they scream and somebody lifts them and moves them. They give another shout, when Allah says it's but one shout, they give another shout and somebody knows, oh that one's hungry and they feed them. They give another shout. And they like, change me. All this power from an unaudible or unrecognizable tongue, but it is recognized by the soul. And that Allah wants to show this is a miracle because this creation is coming from my paradises, just newly arrived, no sins. As a result, 
you will carry it, you will feed it, you will clean it, you will take care of it. And then that insan grows. So Allah just designed everything to come to us and that every ease to come to this creation, wa laqad karamna bani adam that I love them, I created this creation out of love. Then Allah introduced the understanding of shayateen and, and evilness and badness. And the desire of badness is to bring itself close to that human, make them to do something that Allah is not pleased with and as a result that individual now has to move in a more difficult way to reach their sustenance and to reach Allah's Divinely pleasure. And that how this system works. So when the awliya are teaching and the shaykhs are teaching about sins and people put into their mind, they rationalize with their mind that this sin is okay, this sin is okay, this sin I'll, I'll, I'll make istighfar, this sin I'll make istighfar and I'll ask for forgiveness for this, I'll ask for forgiveness for that. But in reality they're not understanding the energy of what is happening. That this shield of protection that Allah wants us to build, by means of that protection you're able to do your practices, you're able to do the salawats, you're able to do all of the things that bring immense blessings for the soul to achieve its mission upon this earth. And as soon as insan listens to the waswas and allows the evilness to get close, their only interest is to inspire towards that which Allah is not pleased with. And as soon as the servant enters into that action what happens? Because it's not about rationalizing the sins and, oh this is an okay sin I can make istighfar for, this is a sin that I can't. You have to think about is the sin that you're, you're committing, about to commit or commit on a daily, on a daily basis, is it opening up your shield of protection? Because that's all the devil needs is that as soon as the sins come from insan as if the the vortex of their protection, the shield of their protection has a hole. So now this earth has a similar situation. Allah designed this earth with a shield and above you are seven layers of atmosphere as a protection, right? So insan because of the sayyata amalina, the, the sins of their actions there's now holes in the atmosphere and the earth's shield that shields us from every type of difficulty to reach us, Allah shows, I show you on your yourself and that which you probably don't believe but I'll show you understand that this is just a reflection of ourselves. So when we sit here and the scientists say, oh the atmosphere has a hole in it, yeah because the sins of humans. Of course they has a hole, has holes all over it because Allah is going to allow punishment to come. And as a result of these holes that which was once beatific and illuminating, the sunshine actually now comes through and burns people. That they have areas on this planet where they warn you don't go out in the sun because you will get skin cancer from the amount of sun and the penetration of that light that coming through. And imagine all the other beams that are coming through because the shield of the earth is being lost. That's on the horizon. Now imagine insan inside the one whom is clever should understand. Everything we see and understand from this earth is merely a reflection of us. Earth represents people, the moon represents guidance and, and the sun represents Sayyidina Muhammad the eternal light of prophecy. So we are the inhabitants of the earth, whatever they tell us is happening on this earth is actually a reflection of what really happens within ourselves. So the good actions and good amal literally with our, with our nazma and our qudra illuminates the heart. When Allah قال بِنْ مُؤْمِنْ بَيْتُ اللَّهُ When the heart and where Allah's rida 
is residing, Ghazala has no location. But Allah's satisfaction is into the heart. When He sees the heart is good, the heart is clean, the heart is filled with good manners and love, what happens? Allah's love resides within that heart and as a result that heart has a shield all around the physicality. So the heart knows that this physicality is very weak. That which is in from paradise knows that although they think their physicality is strong and they lift weights and they try to make themselves like an ox and a donkey and a bull, the soul knows that oh, one little thorn from Allah and you can't move that big huge body of yours. So the soul knows, I am protecting the body. When the actions are good and Allah's love is residing within the heart, the soul is sending a shield of energy all around the body to protect the body to protect the inner energy that's being developed and to protect from outside intruders. All the ifrit and shayateen that are always coming during these pandemics, it's a, it's a jinn attack, it's a ifrit attack, means they have in abundancely entered onto the earth, their mere presence near humans make them sick because of the uncleanly nature of their reality. And the, the atmosphere in which they exist is not our atmosphere. The oxygen that they breathe with nitrogen is not the oxygen that we breathe. Everything they have to create in a different way to put themselves upon this earth and that's all these sicknesses that we're living through. So then what Allah wants for us, what Sayyidina Muhammad wants for us, what only Allah are inspired to teach for us is that keep the practices, keep all of the good actions, keep all of all of these ways that Allah is giving to us so that love resides within the heart. And the sins that shaitan is inspiring us to do then think again and think to ourselves that this is going to knock out my protection. This is going to bring a hole within this bubble of protection and then as a result of that hole every type of difficulty comes to that person, every type of sickness comes to that person and that becomes the difficulty of life upon this earth. It's not a matter of mentally trying to think of, oh sins and oh that's like old fashioned understanding and news. Think of all sins and good deeds based on energy. What action do you do to build your energy and keep your protective shield around you? And what actions actually knock a hole in the protective energy? And as a result of that hole there are millions of afraid that are just all around the circle of your protection. They're waiting for a hole to come, as soon as the hole comes then they're moving in. And then the servant that is having these holes, that's why then Prophet brought for us istighfar and repentance and all the ways of repentance because repentance is the way in which to patch the hole immediately. The greatest repentance that Allah has given to us is Yawmul Jummah. So that the actions that the servant does and that we do throughout the week, known and unknown. So we go first from the greatest, the, the greatest protection Allah gave to us is Jummah and that's why they said, don't miss Jummah. Don't miss Jummah, don't choose your work and money over Jummah because Jummah is the, is the immense cleaning. Jummah is the time in which Allah the real Jummah is in paradise and the real Jummah is in the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad And that light and that fires that in that Jummah everything is, is reborn and renewed. That everything comes into that light, shatters and Allah brings it as something new because we said the world of light is supreme to the physicality. So by the Jummah on earth is an imitation of the heavenly Jummah. 
So that when we come and we shower for Jummah, it's like a ghusl for the death, it's like the washing of the dead body. That you're preparing yourself for the realities of paradise. So that when you're showering and that's why Prophet gave for us that shower on Jummah. Why? Because it's like the shower of the death that you're washing away all of the sins of your life and you're going to be presented in the next few hours to Allah's Divinely Presence. So as soon as they wash, they wash away all the sins and all the badness, they clip what they have to clip just like it was a janazah. Just like you watch how they wash the dead and they do all the clipping, the wrapping and the perfuming. And then the servant heads for the Jummah, as soon as they're heading out for the Jummah every step an inch towards the Jummah Allah is writing away the sins of that servant. So this is the most immense washing and cleansing to repair the shield for the week. And as soon as they enter into the Jummah Allah is dressing them, blessing them, repairing the shield and Prophet described the servant becomes as if newborn, that they just came because they are, they are being dressed by their paradise reality in which Allah shatters one reality and redresses as something completely new in paradise. Allah described that, my Lord at every moment has a different tajalli. But something we can't understand, as you change clothes on this earth, Allah changed the lights of His servants. At every moment Allah's changing a light more beautific, more fragrant, more, more amazing to show the immense kingdom of Allah That you see these billionaires on, on social media, they have these clothes, they have these things, why? To show their wealth. Allah wants to show that my wealth is not even in your comprehension. That at every moment the tajalli changes upon my servants, one more beautiful than the other, one more astounding than the other, so much so that the angels are astonished that what lights Allah bestow upon this creation, what beauty and medallions Allah bestows upon this creation. That's why Allah says, for this yawm al jummah come with the best of your adornments. That adorn yourself with the most beautific clothes that you have. So human people they want to go buy nice clothes for jummah, alhamdulillah is sunnah for that. But more important to Allah is that come with your zikr, come with your salawats, come with all the nasheeds that you've been doing like medallions upon your soul. And as soon as you enter into the jummah Allah rejuvenate and renew every light upon their soul, every medallion with new colours, new beautific realities so that Allah described, no I has seen. Each servant different from the other servant, no ears have heard what lights and what sounds, what beautific beauties are, are emanating from these souls. So the immensity of what Allah dresses from the realities of Jummah, wipes away all the badness, immensely fills with beautific lights and blessings, this is the most beautific dress. And that's why that if you can't go to the physical Jummah it's no problem. You make intention and you pray the Jummah from your home, that's why the app has the words for the Jummah. It's not the association of 20 people that's bringing that, it's the Jummah in the paradise with Prophet All that we're asking is that, Ya Rabbi that I'm going to pray my Jummah, this, the, the, maybe this the center is too far and it's not accessible. I'm asking that the intention to be in the Jummah with Prophet in the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad and make it to be the real Jummah and the app has the words for Yawm al Jummah and reciting the Jummah, asking to be washed and dressed by those blessings, that becomes the, the greatest shield and the greatest repairing of the energy shield and the blessing shield. And then throughout we have the istighfars on the app, we have all the salawat and the duruds upon the app that as soon as the servants are making sins, we make sins is make quickly the istighfar, keep asking for istighfar that Allah patch those openings so that the shayateen are not entering through those. And the salawats, the duruz, the, du, the, the awrads and all of the recitations, all of them 
immense light, immense blessings, immense wording that these Sultanul Awliya were given by the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad So when we recite the, the awrad for Fajr or the awrad for Zohr, these are words that have an immense weight and reality in Divinely Presence, meant to wash away and repair all of these difficulties that we put upon ourselves on a minute by minute basis in this dunya. And now the consequences are far greater because of the immensity of difficulty coming and the immensity of bad energies that are everywhere. We pray that Allah dress us and bless us, inspire us towards goodness and good actions and good deeds and forgive all the wrongness and wrong deeds and keep us always under the nazar and intercession of Sayyidina Muhammad nazar and intercession of the Ashab al Nabi Wasallam, Ahlul Bayt and Nabi Wasallam, and all awliyaullah fi samahi wa fil ard bi hurmat Muhammad al-Mustafa wa bi siri surat al-Fatiha.